this session is main, mainly about uh, the new release that's going to coming up in the next uh, few days. So uh, the overview would be to talk about the messaging model, basically some fundamental stuff, and uh, present about uh, existing Boca architectures. Then we'll present about uh, what we have implemented. Then we'll talk about new features, roadmap, and some use cases. Some concepts. <coughs> so uh, when we talk about messaging, the, the, the most uh, primitive and fundamental way of doing things would be to do it in RPC style. What we mean by that is to have the both, both two communicating parties online at the same time. If someone goes down, you will lose the message. So that's the most uh, easiest way of doing things and the most uh, frequent way of doing things. But then again, there are other possibilities. So in order to do these other possibilities, you need to have some kind of a entity in the middle. So we call these entities as brokers or messaging systems. So with that, uh, there are other possibilities of communicating. So the most fundamental uh, uh, concepts would be to have queues and topics where the, which if you keep on sending messages to a queue, uh, only uh, re one receiver will get messages. And the, uh, on the other hand, if you send to a topic, uh, each and everyone uh, will get a copy of the message. And there are slight variations, such as durable subscriptions. So uh, what happens here is, suppose the, uh, the consumers are not online. So the, the, the man in the middle, the broker, will keep on accumulating messages on behalf. And when the consumer comes in, it will keep on sending messages. So if you don't want messages, you have to explicitly say you don't want messages. Unsubscription. In such a situation, the broker will stop collecting messages. And if he has collected messages, it will probably destroy. So uh, other things. And there are different semantics. I mean, you can uh, keep on sending messages in a transactional manner and consume also in a transactional manner, each manner and uh, uh, guaranteed delivery and the quality of service levels, for example, MQTT and MQ AMQP supports this. And, and uh, then comes the uh, Didlecher channel where you will try to de deliver the messages to a consuming client. And if that fails after a number of deliveries, then we will be placed in some special place we can call Deadlit channel. So the admin or maybe uh, some other party can go and figure out uh, what happened. Or maybe you can configure policies on uh, what you are going to do with these messages. Maybe reroute it to some other place. So these kind of things uh, are the ones that you will see when it comes to messaging broker. There are some other aspects as well. But then again, some of the frequent stuff that you will see in a message, uh, uh, brokering system. So. In a production, you will never install a single broker, because that's single point of failure if, if that's something you want to do. So most of the time, you will do a cluster. In such a situation, uh, what you would get is distributed queues and distributed topics. In, then, uh, ideally, what, what you want to do is to send messages to one broker node and receive from other. Then uh, uh, in, in, when that, uh, that happens, uh, Global order is not really relevant. What, what is relevant would be to uh, receive messages the way it was sent, as depicted in, in, in the image, where the M1, M2, M3 goes where uh, the M1, M3 will be after M1, that kind of scenario. So even if you try, if some broker tries to do uh, some kind of a global uh, ordering, that's going to kill the performance anyways. So no, nobody does that. So. A short survey on uh, 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 how uh, uh, brokers implement Q and, uh, the distributed queues and topics. First one is master-slave, which is not really a uh, 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 distributed uh, scenario. For, uh, it's just a kind of a, a fault tolerance mechanism. A master will keep doing all the work. If that goes down, the slave will take over. And the second scheme is to have the, the queue declared at the particular broker node. And if the, some other key, uh, broker node receives messages, it has to send to the, the place the queue exists. From there, you will disseminate the messages to other places. Then uh, the third uh, scheme, the client connections, is basically there's no kind, uh, clustering mechanism. The client uh, knows where to send the message. And it knows where the queue exists. 
Uh, third is uh, broker networks, where uh, uh, it's kind of created topology, maybe it's uh, statically configured or dynamically discovered. Uh, client sends message, it keep on going multiple hopes until you know, some kind of interested party uh, basically consumes messages. So all these situations, you will see that uh, sometimes that uh, some kind of a transmission happening through brokers, so which leads to uh, kind of a bandwidth problems when uh, large messages or the heavy load is uh, kind of uh, incurred. And it basically uh, uh, gives you a, a complicated clustering story when you do brokers, broker clusters. So avoid this. Uh, our design objective and the way we solve this problem is unique. The way we want to do is to have the uh, broker uh, uh, connected using some kind of coordination framework. We use Hazelcast now. We used to use Zookeeper for that. Uh, then uh, have a kind of central storage, store all the messages. And uh, yeah, so then. Uh, you will send messages, and if you, some subscriber comes into a, a different broker, it will go to the database and take it. So the, but then again, or, or the global state, uh, for example, subscriptions that are coming in and, and uh, queues that are created, topics that are created, will exist. That information is kind of replicated in the, every broker node. Uh, that kind of a, simplifies the how user would uh, interact with the broker. So, uh, in the user's point of view, the, 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 it gives a, a simplified clustering story. So more design objectives. This is for like uh, the, this specific release. So we want we were basically uh, uh, kind of uh, relied on Cassandra, but then again we uh, wanted to have kind of pluggable architecture in the data persistence layer. So uh, what we did was to separate out the two parts and have clear def defined programming uh, interfaces for that. And we uh, did some more informants. We'll, we'll talk about this, which leads to uh, higher performance and simplified uh, clustering story results linear deployment layout. And we want to keep on building a code and wrap that uh, uh, with uh, whatever the uh, uh, protocols that are coming in. We, we're going to do MQTT and AMQP just to start with. So this is how we solved our, uh, uh, the distributed queues problem. The way it works is let's, let's consider you have three node cluster. And uh, let's say you have a queue. Publisher one will keep on publishing messages to node one. And simultaneously, you will have a subscriber one connecting to node two and ask for messages. So uh, then one thing to note, to note here is also that uh, we have, when, when you get messages, we'll have to, uh, we store payload, the actual messages separately, and there will be metadata about the message. We normally work with the metadata, and the only time we touch the metadata, uh, the actual payload is to when you want to actually send the message. Until that, we won't normally touch that. So that's for performance reasons. That's kind of normal when you're working with brokers. So. Uh, <coughs> so how this works is uh, publisher will uh, send uh, the node one will keep on s saving messages in the database and, and when it reaches to a let's say thousand it will say to there will be a, a new node a new role uh, kind of a leader in the cluster uh, who will keep uh, kind of uh, managers and keep information about this batches of uh, messages, we call term them as slot. And simultaneously, we'll have a subscriber coming in and ask for messages. Then uh, that node will connect to the connect, uh, coordinator and get this batch of messages allocated for the subscriber and keep on delivering these messages. Simultaneously, you will have the publisher publishing messages continuously. Second batch of messages completes. Then subscriber two will uh, ask for messages, and this will be allocated to subscribe to. So this is kind of a very simplified approach uh, on how it's working. And for example, let's say uh, you have the subscriber to uh, disconnects. Then the remaining remainder of the message, let's say this guy only consumed like 500 messages, then the, the, next, the other 500 will be returned to the pool, and that will be allocated again 
to the uh, subscriber one or maybe some other subscriber who's interested in. So that this keeps on happening. Uh, that's basically uh, how the new dissemination model works. The, uh, and uh, this is basically the, the how the major components uh, are kind of placed in, in a single JVM. So uh, we have two performance critical paths. First one is the inbound. The other one we call it as outbound path. Uh, whatever the uh, uh, events that's coming in, it could be uh, UI events, server, important server events, or any message, or it, any event about a uh, subscriber coming in, or maybe publisher trying to publish messages, maybe uh, uh, some kind of acknowledgement came to uh, a message that you sent out, will be placed into a, this uh, uh, inbound disruptor. This is nothing but a, 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 a circular ring buffer, and there will be a set of threads uh, operating on this data that's placed in, in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a unique manner that reduces the thread contentions. This is basically, if you want to know about more, you can uh, basically go and read the disruptor, uh, the documentation. It's a very unique uh, data structure, allows better performance. So eventually, uh, the messages will get uh, saved in the database. And let's say uh, you have a consumer coming in and ask for messages. What happens here is then uh, uh, this node will contact the coordinator, get a bunch of messages, a slot allocated to uh, this subscriber, and place that in the outbound disruptor, the relevant information. Then in, uh, the outbound disruptor will, uh, in a batch mode, go and uh, get uh, the, uh, the data and uh, dispatch that via transport. This is also a kind of a very simplistic view on what's happening inside. Gives, uh, it gives us better performance because we use this, oh, sorry, disruptors. So uh, some more features that we are packing in this release. Uh, the big, uh, biggest one is the MQTT uh, uh, protocol and the shared subscriptions. And we switch from Cassandra to the relational databases. And uh, some we packed some uh, 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 library allows us to do some uh, show some nice U, uh, statistics about when the uh, cluster actually starts to operate. So let's go one by one. So MQTT it's like re uh, it's a trending protocol nowadays. It gives uh, it's a very lightweight protocol, PubSub, and they operate it in, in multiple QoS levels. First one is at most at once delivery where you keep on sending messages and you don't wait for, for acknowledgement. The second one is the QoS one. You basically wait for acknowledgement. Third one is the more uh, the exactly ones where you can send the message, you receive acknowledgement, you send acknowledgement back to the broker, and uh, then uh, cycle completes. So these are the, in this order, the, the reliability is more, but then again requires more bandwidth and uh, includes a lot of latency. So uh, that's something that we are delivering this in, re in this release. The, the version is that we, uh, the 3.11, the latest spec. And uh, this is something uh, we did uh, based on the, uh, the client's demands, because we are still supporting JMS 1.1, which has this limitation when it comes to uh, load balancing, uh, shared durable, subscri uh, durable subscriptions, which was actually kind of a sold in JMS2. So what happens here is, suppose you have, a, this is kind of, a, let's say you have a, a group of consumers who want to subscribe to a topic and uh, consume messages. The, when the, with the JMS 1.1, what happens here is only one uh, consumer can connect and consume message, which is a real problem, because the other two will be doing nothing. Basically, no load balancing. So uh, the only if this guy dis uh, disconnects, then the other one can connect. So we did a kind of a optimization or kind of extension so that this allows a, 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 um, all three consumers to connect and uh, consume messages. This is really true. For example, let's say you have a broker cluster here and you have a ESB cluster here. And, ES and ESB tries to listen to a topic, so therefore, uh, 
uh, you have to enable this pro uh, configuration saying you, this is a shared durable subscription. Otherwise, uh, ESB will consume only ES one ESB node will consume messages. This is true for any other load balancing. Uh, any any uh, consumer group who's trying to uh, consuming uh, messages in a load balancing manner. So, uh, another thing that we worked on is the flow control. Uh, in the AMQP specification, there is a provisions that enables us to, uh, uh, for server to say, okay, st stop sending messages uh, temporarily until we finish whatever we have uh, received. So that's there. So we uh, basically can do that. We, we actually had the implementation there in the previous release, but then we improved on it. Where we can, you can uh, specify limits on the, the, the number of messages that you can say, get inside uh, per connection, or maybe it could be the global uh, number. Or, for example, let's say the database uh, is out of uh, offline, then uh, we can actually hold accepting messages. Gives us better reliability and predictability. So uh, then there are some other improvements, such as we are now uh, Im uh, embedding a, a uh, statistics library and helps us to kind of show the user about the database latencies and inbound event rates, outbound event rates. Really useful when it comes, if you are trying to operate a cluster in a production. And our dis disruptor model uh, based uh, uh, threading and a lot of uh, improvements went into topic management and etc. A lot of caching. So, uh, so this release uh, is packing a lot of new improvements, and the, the roadmap for the next releases would be to uh, basically implement uh, AMQP1 and the JMS2, and uh, there are certain uh, uh, improvements that we are planning to do on the uh, relational databases-based storage scheme, and we are looking at our options to whatever. Uh, is there any other mechanism that we can incorporate as well and keep on improving? And uh, if uh, then we we will we want to focus on WebSockets and Storm too. So why uh, this design makes sense? So the way we solve uh, the distributed queues and topic scenario uh, is kind of unique. When you compare compared to uh, any other brokers, you can go to uh, the clustering sections and see how this model uh, compares against the other ways. And uh, it gives you a very simpler uh, cl uh, clustering story, results in with, uh, leaner deployment models and maintenance. And uh, relational databases are kind of uh, the, the in initial release that gives you better uh, ability to manage it, etc. cetera. And uh, yes, so uh, some use cases on uh, uh, you how a message broker can work with uh, enterprise service bus. Uh, this is basically guaranteed delivery. Uh, for example, let's say you have a client keep on sending messages, and uh, it needs to go to a server. And uh, you need to have some kind of reliability. So you can store these uh, messages in a queue in message broker. Then you have uh, this component message processor in the uh, service bus which will pick this message and keep on sending. What you will get here is the reliability. If the uh, server is slow, you can throttle also. So this is kind of an extended use case. Uh, shows you uh, where message broker could fit in. So uh, the use case is about, let's say, you have uh, in a city, you have uh, buses keep on sending mess uh, messages, which contains, let's say, uh, speed, uh, uh, location data and the general direction. Based on that, you can have uh, various uh, statistics generated, like let's say the traffic violations. Based on that, it, it, those mess, uh, alerts could be published using JMS again, and ESB will listen to it and uh, fetch uh, various information that's required and, and maybe uh, trigger a kind of a business process, maybe to investigate traffic violations, that kind of thing. So uh, that's uh, the uh, new version of Message Broker. So if you have any questions, I can. Uh